So I'm with Eric Void from NRK. Eric, tell us about your role in NRK. Uh, I'm a senior, senior engineer and I also work as a project manager in uh, innovation projects, mainly on streaming and, uh, of course, uh, production. And what was your presentation about at the conference today? It was about 5G production, uh, how you can utilize 5G uh, in a private network to um, have a sort of robust 5G island that you can trust uh, has the capacity you need for a remote production. So what does it make possible that you couldn't do before? I think the difference now is that you can have an autonomous network. Uh, I mean, you can basically have an island with its own 5G core on site locally. And uh, the great thing with that is also you can connect it to any internet, even a satellite if you need. So uh, it gives us a capability basically to be on site with the needed capacity on a very short notice. Uh, and that is, of course, if the, the frequency uh, administration, <laughs> NCOM, <laughs> is giving us the opportunity to. So we're, we're hoping, together with the Norwegian Armed uh, Forces, uh, to get access to 2.3 gigahertz. Uh, that is a full 100 um, megahertz band, uh, which will give sufficient capacity for production. And, and what kind of production opportunities are these? What sort of, uh, is this news events? Is it sport? What sort of application areas are we talking about? I would say both. Uh, what justifies the access to resources is, of course, our legal requirements to, to bring uh, the government uh, or the governing people on uh, air. Uh, and also covering news, of course. Uh, but in big events, I think there is a massive uh, opportunity to do cost savings and becoming a way more green than what we are today, basically. Because we can travel with a uh, smaller crew. We don't need to spend that much time uh, on you know, all the cables that you usually need in the production. And I would say, in general, for news, it makes it so flexible that we are able to cover things like landslide. You, you couldn't uh, pull a cable across uh, Jadidrum or these kind of events uh, that's happening more and more now due, due to the environmental situation. So I think it's more and more relevant. And of course, uh, with the situation in U uh, Ukraine, it's really now that we need these, these resources. The last three years have seen tremendous global changes. We've been through a lot. Uh, what are the big industry changes you've observed, I guess, in the areas we've been talking about? Remote production has really come on a long way. Yeah, yeah, it has, it has matured a lot. And I think, of course, everyone knows now that there is a parallel workflow that is way more efficient when things become available through the cloud. And that's a good thing with going IP also on wireless. I mean, it's the same, basically but it's even more flexible, I would say. So uh, what I think is the, the, the big winner for us in Fudge 5G, which is the EU-funded project that we are running now, and the coming, uh, imagine, uh, beyond 5G, is uh, basically that we are able to see across the borders or all the verticals, uh, because the verticals have different use cases, but they have very similar requirements. So for us and the Norwegian armed forces and also the emergency services, we need uplink speed. That's not a priority to the operators today. So that's why we need networks that works differently, that has a different frame structure, as they call it. So the, upgrade, uh, the uplink part is bigger. So we can get from 20% uplink that we have now in commercially available networks to actually 77.8%. Uh, that's almost a fourfold of the capacity that we have today, if we have our own frequencies. And is that, looking ahead, one of the big changes you expect to see? Yes, I believe so. But you can also add uh, synchronization. And that requires a very precise network, a deterministic network, uh, TSN or 5G LAN, which it is a part of. Uh, and, and these technologies are not mature. So we need to investigate further how we can make that precision good enough. It's now an, uh, 80 microseconds of detail, but we need to uh, get below uh, so like 0 0.9 microseconds. So this is really something we need to work uh, on as an industry. And it's interesting to see that, you know, ABB and real heavy industry partners in this cooperation uh, has the ability to, to figure that out. What does synchronization give? What, what does it allow you to do that? It, it allows the cameras to be frame accurate. That's not too challenging though. But if we go on to the really high end IP standard, it's called ST2110, then the requirements are really high for precision because there is a clock that is very precise in terms of nanoseconds. So that is the PTP clock. For that to work in a general production environment, both wireless and on wire, we need a more precise 5G network. And of course, there are several needs for that as well in other verticals. 
looking ahead, Eric, do you have any other predictions or forecasts? I think that uh, we might need to look into 5G broadcast as well, because that is uh, something that really hasn't been a priority. It's been very difficult to find a good business case for it, I guess. But now that we have the terrestrial network probably being switched off quite soon, that's maybe something we should look into. So what time frame do you expect for that? Uh, well, around 60 years. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, uh, till 2030, uh, within the time frame of 2025 20, 20 to 2030. Yeah. So you, you work for a, a Norwegian broadcaster. In common with other Nordic companies, you know, there's increasing competition in the marketplace, especially from global players. How do you think that Nordic media companies can remain competitive? I think they're, the biggest advantage we have is we know the area we're in. Local content is really the, the killer. I mean, it's the win. And it's also, uh, I would say, live. I mean, the big global uh, competitors, you might call them, they're not focused on live and local. And we can be really, really good at that. So I think we should just continue to do what we're best at. Eric, thank you very much. Thank you.